uh, when you develop applications, you often have to generate regular sequences of numbers. Okay, so let's look at some ways in which regular sequences can be generated. So the easiest way to generate a regular sequence is simply using the colon operator 1 colon 10. What that does is, as you already know, it generates the vector consisting of the numbers 1 to 10. Okay, of course, I don't have to say 1 colon 10, I could say, you know, 5 colon 55 and it will generate the numbers from 5 to 55, the increment is obviously 1. Okay, so that uh, that works fine. Or you can of course do C 1 colon 10, which is redundant, because 1 colon 10 itself generates a vector. So there's really no point in saying C 1 colon 10. But it does the same thing. Okay, now some subtleties. Suppose I do 2 times 1 colon 10. Is this the same as 2 colon 10? Or is this 1 colon 10 and then multiplied by 2? Okay, you can probably try it out and see what happens. Uh, it'll be a good idea for you to, uh, you know, pause the video, go into our studio, execute this and uh, explain for yourself why, you know, what actually happened. Now, if you try it out, you would have seen that the result looks like this. So clearly what happened was that it first generated this say, sequence 1 to 10 and then it multiplied by 2. Now, why didn't it first multiply 2 by 1 and then generate the sequence 2 to 10? It didn't do that because now here you have two operators. One is a multiplication operator. Other is the sequence or colon operator. And whenever you have many operators, any system has to have a way of figuring out the order in which it's going to evaluate operators. Okay. And in R, it so happens that the colon operator has a higher precedence than the multiplication operator. And therefore, that gets done first. So even though the multiplication operator comes first, R is going to do the colon operator first because that has precedence. Okay, so it's first going to create the sequence 1 to 10 and then multiply that sequence by the vector by 2. And of course, that means multiplying every element by 2 and that's what the result is. Right, so if you did it the other way, you would still get the same results. Right, but because the colon operator is there, the star operator is there, the colon operator has precedence, it's going to get done first, no matter what order you get it. So you're going to get the same result. Okay, uh, let's look at some more. So here, I want to generate the sequence of numbers from 1 to n minus 1. Okay, so let's say n has the value 11. And I want to generate the sequence from 1 to n minus 1. I could not say 1 colon n minus 1. Right, in other words, we cannot be doing this. That is, uh, let's say I, I'm going to delete all this. Let's say I do n is 11, right? And then I do 1 colon n minus 1, okay? If I did this, that is, suppose I want the numbers from 1 to n minus 1. In other words, from 1 to 10. But if I did 1 colon n minus 1, it's not going to work because the colon has a higher precedence. So what this will do is it will generate the sequence 1 to 11 and then it will subtract 1 from every element. So you'll end up getting the sequence 2 to 10. Okay, so let's do this. Let's run it and actually see what happens. Uh, sorry, uh, 0 to 10, not 2 to 10 because uh, it will generate 1 to 11 and then it's going to subtract 1 from every element. You'll end up getting from 0 to 10. What I wanted was 1 to 10, right? So the way to achieve that is 1 colon, and because the we want the minus 1 to be done first, we put it within parentheses, okay? This is the age-old trick of using parentheses to affect the sequence of operations. If you did that, then you'll get 1 to 10 as we want. So that's what the slide is talking about, okay? So here n was 11. I didn't show that here. And, you know, we saw this, these two results, right? It's happening because of the precedence of the colon operator. Here we are explicitly saying it, uh, making it do the subtraction first by putting it within parentheses. So parentheses we use to affect the sequence of operations just like we did in elementary school. Okay, uh, so with the colon operator, you can generate sequences that uh, increment by one. But sometimes you have to use uh, other sorts of sequences. 
So for example, you now have the seek function. If I did seek 1 comma 10, it's the same as doing 1 colon 10, right? Because in the seek function, you can tell it starting value, ending value, and the incrementing step. If you don't mention the incrementing step, then the incrementing step is automatically 1. If you don't mention the starting value, that is also automatically 1, and so on. Okay, so this is going to do just the same as 1 colon 10. And it's the same as saying from equals 1 to equals 10, right? In other words, the first argument is really the from. And the second argument is really the to. If you want, you can specify the names of the arguments or you don't have to. Okay, R supports both kinds of arguments. Of course, if you don't give the names of the arguments, you have to give them in the correct order. If you give the names of the arguments, then the order doesn't matter. Okay, now comes the interesting part. You can say by equals 2. In other words, start from 1, go up to 10, but increment it by 2. So it's going to do 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Right? Because we said go only up to 10. So the next number would be 11, which is beyond 10, so it doesn't show the next number. Okay? So you can use from, to, by. That also works. Okay? You can also increment by uh, fractional values. In fact, you can even change by negative values if you like. Okay. And of course, your starting number can be negative. So you can say go from minus 2 to 2, increment by 0 0.2. So you're going to get minus 2, minus 1.8, etc, etc. That's also possible. So all combinations are possible there. So here we are saying we're using it in a different way. We are saying generate for me a sequence of length 5, start from 1. We didn't say where to end because we said generate 5 values, right? We also didn't specify the incrementing value, which means it's going to go by 1. So it will do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So if you specify from and length, then obviously you should not specify 2. Okay, so you can again do by equals 0 0.3. Here by was by default 1, and you're going to get these results. Okay, so there are many different ways in which you can generate these sequences. Okay, uh, you will sometimes also have to repeat values certain numbers of times. Okay, for example, R automatically did that when it did recycling. Okay, so I've got x uh, is 1, 2, 3. And of course, if I just say x, I'm going to get 1, 2, 3. You can use the rep function to replicate, right? Of course, if I just do replicate x, it's going to just show me 1, 2, 3, because by default, you're saying replicate it once. But you can indicate how many times to replicate. So if you did this, you would get 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 3 times, right? So it's, it's replicated three times. That's what the rep function does, okay? Now, when you're replicating the elements, you may want the... Uh, entire vector to get replicated in its sequence or you may want each element to be replicated that many times then you can use each equals in which case you'll get one 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 two 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 three 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 okay once again i'm just showing you all of these things uh, we may not use these things in the course but if you look at our code it's quite common to see these kinds of things uh, that people write okay so let's review what we did with uh, sequences. Once again, like before, uh, the you'll get the best benefit out of the time you're spending listening to the lecture by trying it out by yourself before you look at my answers. Okay. Now, of course, I've given you the, the slides. The slides obviously contain the answers, but it'll be a good idea for you not to look at the answers. Right? Because you're spending time, you should get the best value for it. So clearly, the sequence of numbers from 3 to 100, you can do 3 colon 100. Now, here is a sequence. Explain why the third number in the output of the following expression is 156, right? So if you run it, 50 colon 100 times 3. 50 colon 100 times 3. If I run it, the third number you'll see is 156. So the question is, why is this 156? Okay, the answer, of course, is that colon has precedence, 
So what it does is it first generates the sequence 50 to 100. So this, the sequence will start with 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, etc. And then you're multiplying each element by 3. So the third element was 52 multiplied by 3, you get 156. Okay, so that's what you expect. Okay, the R variable limit contains a positive number greater than 26. Write the R expression to create a vector containing num numbers from 20 to 5 less than the limit. In other words, 20 to limit minus 5. Okay, so of course if you did this, you probably got 20 colon limit minus 5. What I'm stressing here is the fact that you need to put parentheses around limit minus 5. Otherwise, it will generate 20 to limit and subtract 5 from every element, right? which is not what we want. Okay, So that's what it's doing. This is similar. You can take a look at it. Uh, the R variable start contains a number. Write the R expression to create a vector containing the numbers from start minus 10 to 1000. By now, based on the previous example, clearly you know that you have to put start minus, I, I said 10, but I've got 20 here, uh, but you, you get the idea. Let me change it right away. So start minus 10 has to be in parentheses because of operator precedence. Okay, so the R variable X contains the number 5 explain the result of the following r expression. Okay, So if you do x minus 5 colon 10, this is what the result is. Why is the result this? Okay, Obviously, the result is this because colon has precedence. So it's going to generate the sequence 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then it's going to do uh, subtract each of those numbers from 5. Right? So 5 minus 5 is 0, 5 minus 6 is minus 1. 5 minus 7 is minus 2, and then 5 minus 10 is minus 5. Okay, so again, it's all about operator precedence that we've already spoken about. Now, here we are saying generate the sequence of odd numbers from 3 to 55. We want only the odd numbers. Right, in other words, we want 3, 5, 7, 9, etc. So, obviously, the answer is going to be sequence 3, 55 by 2, or you could say from equals 3. Uh, 2 equals 55 by equals 2. You can do that as well. Generate the sequence of multiples of 6 starting from 36. Generate 10 numbers in all. Okay, so your answer should be, meaning the result should be 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, uh, starting from 36, I'm sorry, 36, 42, 48, etc. And you need 10 of these numbers. So obviously this time you're going to do from 36 by 6. You're not going to specify 2. Instead you're going to say length 10. Okay. So that's that gets the job done for us. Explain the output of the following expression. Sequence by equals 5, length equals 10, right? We have not specified the starting value. So if you don't specify the starting value, R is going to treat it as 1. Okay, so it's going to do 1 and then increase by 5, 6, 11, etc. And it's going to give you 10 results overall. Okay, uh, so we will stop here for this week. I've posted assignments on Blackboard. So uh, you know, submit those assignments. Again, like I've said in the introduction, uh, the due date for the assignment is always uh, the you know midnight of the following Sunday. So I'll be posting all the materials on Monday by end of day and uh, you should finish the assignments by end of day on S Sunday. Now please don't start uh, looking at the lectures only on Sunday afternoon. Okay, then you're going to be really hurried. You're not going to get time to internalize whatever you're learning. You'll get the best results if you start looking at the lectures early on in the week, right? Uh, and I would strongly suggest first listen to the video and pause the video at various points, experiment with the code, and uh, whenever I've got questions, 
you know, stop, answer the questions, look at my answer and so on. You know, whatever time you spend, make it count. Uh, do that and then maybe revisit everything later. And then when you look at the assignments, it will be a breeze. And the act of doing the assignments will reinforce everything that you have learned. And after that, you really won't have to go back to anything that you have learned during the week. It's done. And you are ready to move on to the stuff of the next week. Right. So I strongly recommend that you follow that kind of a discipline and don't just bunch up everything on Sunday evening. Uh, then, of course, you're going to probably get it done, but it's going to be such a stress and your learning may not be as strong as it should be.